All right, this is going to be a part two of trigonometry. Our part one dealt with just finding a missing side um, of a right triangle using the trigonometric functions. We are now going to talk about, after doing our warm-up, talk about what happens if we're missing the angle. So first, our warm-up, uh, Trisha was given a task of making a banner representing uh, and representing her company at a job fair. When Trisha got to the job fair, she was relieved to see that there was a ladder that she could use to hang the banner. While she, want, she, while she waited for someone to help her, she leaned a 12-foot ladder against a wall behind a, the booth. The ladder made an angle of 75 degrees of the floor. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this information to draw and label a right triangle to illustrate what's going on with the ladder and the wall. So we should know here we've got a wall, right? Your wall is going to be vertical. The ladder is going to lean up against it. So I'm just going to draw this to represent my ladder. And then here is the ground. I'm draw my ladder long enough. There we go. And remember that the wall and the ground will always make that right angle, that 90 degrees. So the, the ladder is 12 feet. So over here with the ladder, we've got 12. And the ladder will make a 75 degree angle with the floor. So right here, this is going to be 75 degrees. That's going to be our, um, our angle of perspective. So B is going to say set up and solve an equation to find how far up the wall the ladder, um, the ladder reaches. So we're going to go all the way up here. We're looking this distance. We're looking for our vertical distance. In this problem, we do want to round to the nearest tenth. So of my diagram, I'm going to go ahead and label this as X. When we get to C, they're going to, act, they're going to then ask us the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall. So I'm going to label that Y. Okay. Now, starting off, we want to make sure that we're looking at, here's our reference angle, and we, are, we want to label our H, O's, and A's. H for hypo, uh, hypotenuse is going to be right here. Here's our, our reference angle right here. All the way across to the opposite side will be O, and then adjacent right next to, here there's A. Now, to solve for X, or how far up the wall that ladder goes, we will be using the opposite and the hypotenuse. So O and H is going to be sine. So we go ahead and set up our equation. We have the sine of that angle, 75 degrees, is equal to your opposite, X, over the hypotenuse, 12. And we talked about the shortcut with your um, trigonometric functions when solving. If it, look where X is. If X is in the numerator, we're going to multiply, N, M, numerator, M, multiply. We're just going to take these and multiply those. So then we set that up as making sure that we put 12 first, 12 times the sine of 75. And I'm going to put a little approximate symbol here because we will be rounding. Now in our calculator, whenever we go to the calculate, we need to remember how to do this. We're going to type in the 12 first. Then we're going to press the trig button that's down here next to 7. And we're using signs. So we'll just press Enter. And we're going to type in that 75 degrees that we have there. And we press Enter. And I want you guys to notice something because I forgot to tell you to do something. With these calculators, I want to let you know that negative 4.7 is not the correct answer because I forgot to check and make sure that my calculator was in degree mode. I am in radians, okay? Our, if you think about the distance the ladder reaches on, a, on a, a wall, there's no way it can be negative. So we need to make sure that we are checking our calculators to change it to degree mode. You hover the little hand over here and press that little cursor button and it changes to degree. So now, if I go back and put my, I'm gonna change it back up here. Just a little trick I know, just showing you guys, make sure you see how to put it in your calculator. We're going to end up with 11.6, round to the nearest tenth. So we got 11.6 feet. All right, with the next one, we're already in degree mode. Oh, let me show you the phone app as well for any of those who did not see that. With the Desmos Scientific Calculator app, it's this cube root of 27, okay? When we open this up, we will, uh, the trig functions are right down here for us. We don't have to push any buttons. We just need to type in the 12, then press the sign, and then press in the 75. And your, the Desmos Scientific Calculator will actually already be in degree mode. You'll see it right here. 
automatically. It's the school calculators you have to physically change and make sure that they are in degree mode every single time. All right, next, we are now going to look at the distance from the base of the wall to the base of the ladder. Right here, we labeled Y earlier. We are going to be rounding this to the nearest tenth as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. If we're looking at those two, we are looking at adjacent and hypotenuse. And adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So here we'll set up the cosine of that reference angle, 75 degrees. This will be equal to your adjacent y over the hypotenuse 12. We will be cross multiplying again. And you do the exact same thing in either calculator that I did with the sine, except you just click over to cosine. I am in degree mode, double checked. Trig, I will go to do 12 times, or you don't even have to press times. Trig, we're going to scroll over to cosine and type in 75. And we're going to find that we're going to have approximately 3.1. So now let's look at what happens if we need to find the angle. We give, we're given two sides, we need to find the angle. This is called inverse trigonometric functions. The inverse trigonometric functions are, on the calculator there are a total of 12 different functions when you press the trig button. This is going to be the one that has those negative ones. You're still going to follow that so, ka, and toa with your hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. But now I'll show you exactly how we uh, set this up and solve. First, we're going to go ahead and use our calculator to evaluate each of these to the nearest whole number. Generally, when I'm saying generally, always read, but when we're solving for missing angles with, trigon with trigonometry, we generally will go to the nearest whole number for angles. Now, to type in the uh, inverse function here of one half, that's saying that we've got the sine is opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side is one and the adjacent side is two. We go over here to our trig button next to the seven, and we're going to scroll down one. There are your negatives. There are your inverses on the bottom. We press enter. And then you can either press one divided by two, or I like to press control divide to get my fraction function, one on top, two on bottom, and we press enter. And yes, I did check. I am in degree mode. So this ends up being 30 degrees. On the phone, when we do this, you do have to press a couple buttons to get to the inverse functions, okay? Your sine, cosine, tangent down here. All you have to do to get the inverse functions is press the function button up here. And then there we've got your regular and then we've got your inverse. We press the sign. You do have to go back to main, okay? Press main. Actually, I don't even think you do. Yeah, you do. So you can get the, um, the fraction function, the A over B. And then we'll type one and then very carefully tap in the numerator, sorry, denominator and there's your 30, okay? So now we'll take a look at the inverse cosine of that same exact ratio. So again, here we go, we would click on trig. We're going to go down to the inverses and scroll over to cosine. Then we can press that control divide, press one numerator, two in the denominator, and press enter, and we get 60 degrees. And this is also going to show you how we're using the exact same ratio of one over two. That 60 and that, uh, and that 30 are going to add up to 90 degrees. And those are two of the angles that you've got. And then you've got the right angle of 90, making 180 for the triangle. If that confuses you, just ignore it. All right, so let's take a look now if we have a triangle and we're actually having to use the functions in finding the opposite adjacent hypotenuse on our own. With this, we are going to, again, round to the nearest degree on all six of these, okay? So... First off, first, we've got this theta sign in my, my classes and my previous videos, so you're going to need to know what theta is. Theta is going to be that reference angle where we're standing. So we're standing here. I always suggest find the hypotenuse first and see if we're using it. We are. Then stand at the reference angle. We are going directly next to theta, which is your adjacent side. So here with adjacent and hypotenuse, we are using cosine. So when we set it up, we'll write in cosine of, in the parentheses, we're going to put that theta symbol. Guys, if you don't like the theta symbol, put an X. That's perfectly fine. It's your unknown. But you uh, be aware that you'll see this theta symbol here and there. Then we just set up adjacent 2 over hypotenuse 5. 
Now there is no cross multiplying this and that. All we're going to do is we're going to to do the opposite of the cosine is the inverse cosine. Guys, this is what ends up happening. Theta is going to stay there. On the other side, we have to put in your inverse cosine, and then we have that 2 over 5. That's all we're doing. And don't forget, we've got that negative 1 exponent for the inverse. Then you go to your calculator. You go to your trig function. You go to inverse cosine. And then you type in that was 2 over 5 and press Enter. And to the nearest degree, this will be 66 degrees. So theta, or if you're using x, will be approximately 66. Again, with the phone, we want to make sure that we are going to the function button because we're doing inverse. We're going to type in inverse cosine, go back to main. Type that a over b. Type 2 in the numerator. Tap down on the denominator, and there's your 66 degrees. All right, next. Here is our reference angle. We are not using hypotenuse. Don't even label it. Across here, we've got our opposite. And then directly next to, we have adjacent. O and A is going to be tangent. Right? So we set up tangent of theta will be equal to opposite 8 over adjacent 8. We're going to move that tangent to the other side, creating the inverse tangent. And then we type in the inverse tangent, again, shown with the calculator. Scroll down, scroll over to inverse tangent. And then we type in 8 over 8. And we're going to get 45 degrees exactly. This is a 45-45 special right triangle. That's what we get with, uh, in this case, with the 9 degrees in our isosceles. All right, next, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Here is theta. I'm seeing a cross on the 90 degree angle. I will be using hypotenuse. And then the, from theta, reference angle, we're going to the opposite side to get 6. O and H is, is going to be sine. We go ahead and write in sine of theta, setting up the equation. Opposite, oops, 6, over hypotenuse, 11. We're going to move that sign over to the right-hand side, creating the inverse sign of 6 over 11. And I've already shown you the calculators and everything. I encourage you to pause and go uh, type that in yourself. This will be to the nearest degree, approximately 33 degrees. Next, here's our reference angle across the 90-degree angle. I'm using hypotenuse. And all the way to the opposite side of the triangle, this will be sine. So we have sine of theta is equal to opposite 15 over hypotenuse 41. Let's go ahead and move sine over to create inverse sine of five, uh, sorry, 15 over 41. We beep boop up that into our calculator and we're going to wind up approximately 21 degrees. Please try these last two on your own if you, have, if you did not try the other ones on your own. Okay? It's the same exact concept here. Reference angle, I'm using my hypotenuse H. And from that reference angle, I'm going right next to adjacent. A and H is going to be using cosine. So we set up our cosine of theta will be equal to adjacent 14 over hypotenuse 19. Let's go ahead and move cosine over to create the inverse cosine of 14 over 19. Plugged into the calculator, around to the nearest uh, whole number for nearest degree, approximately 43 degrees. Last one, reference angle. I am not using hypotenuse this time. That means it's automatically tangent. But we need to make sure we know which one's O and which one's A. Opposite side, 23. Adjacent, right next door, A, using tangent. Set up that equation. Tangent of theta will equal opposite, 23, over adjacent, 18. 
All right, let's move tangent over to create the inverse tangent of 23 over 18. Not a whole lot of actual physical work on here. Do your calculator pretty much, once you have it set up, your calculator does everything for you. Theta will be approximately 52 degrees. With all these trigonometric functions, we're finding one side, you know, or just the angle. But with just a side and just the angle, we can do what's called solving a right triangle. This is going to be finding everything missing. So on number, this it says number one, it's the only example here. We are going to solve the triangle, meaning we're going to find both BC and BA. The, uh, and we're, gonna, uh, we're also going to find our, our uh, other angle, angle B. The side lengths are going to be rounded to the nearest tenth, and the angles are going to be the nearest whole degree or whole number. All right, so starting with our reference angle right here at 62, we're going to go ahead and identify we've got across from the right angle, we've got our hypotenuse. We are going to list um, all three, okay? Across from the opposite side of angle A, our reference angle is going to be O, and then right next door will be A. So let's look at first finding BC right here. To find BC, we're going to find that we're going to be using, we can kind of, if you want, you can label. I'm using two different colors, or if you want to put X and Y like we did on the um, on the previous problem on the previous page, you can't. We're going to be using opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent will be tangent. So we'll set this up. The tangent of our reference angle of 62 will be equal to opposite, our missing, over adjacent, 8. When x is in the numerator, multiply. So all we need to do here is cross multiply this to get x equals 8 times the tangent of 62. Okay, Plug that into our calculator, 8 times tangent of 62, round to the nearest tenth as they asked us to do. This is going to be, it will come out as 15.04. The 4 is not going to bump the 0 up, so we can either put 15, or if we really do want that tenths place there, we'd put 15.0. All right, let's take a look at finding AB right here. I'm going to label that Y. So to find AB, this time we're ignoring this. We've already got this guy here. We're at that reference angle right here. We're going to be using adjacent and hypotenuse, which is going to give us cosine. So we'll set up cosine of that 62. This will be equal to adjacent 8 over hypotenuse, our missing one, y. With the missing, uh, missing part in the denominator, we are going to switch and divide, denominator divide. So we're going to switch the cosine in, of 62 and the y. We're, they're going to switch places here. So 8 stays here. y is going to move over to the left side. And the entire thing, you have to pack everything up. When you move, you pack everything up. Cosine and 62 have to go over here to the denominator. And when we plug that into our calculator, we're going to see the same thing where we end up with 17.04. So again, we can leave this as 17 or 17.0 to legitimately be to the nearest tenth. You add the two angles that we have, we add them together, 90 plus 62. We're going to wind up with 152. And then we subtract 152 from 180, and we end up with 28 degrees. The shortcut is also, if you have a right triangle, the two acute add up to 90. So you could have just subtracted 62 from 90 and gotten your answer as well.